All right, guys, so I know it's been quite a while since my last video. It's been actually over a month now. I was going to put a video up about two weeks ago, but unfortunately, I found out that DaVinci Resolve, which I recently downloaded, more to that in a minute, um, it doesn't accept 422 10-bit footage. And not that I really need to record in 422 10-bit for, for YouTube, but I recorded the last video in 422 10-bit, and when I imported it into DaVinci Resolve, I have the free version, I didn't realize that it doesn't accept 422 10-bit. I've been playing around with DaVinci Resolve because I recently just built a new custom video editing gaming PC. Previously, I've been editing on an M1 Mac Mini, and I, I like it. It's, you know, I've, I've been used to Final Cut Pro for a while, but I kind of wanted to get, uh, I, well, I wanted to build a new PC anyway, and I probably should have recorded that and put that on my channel, but uh, I started the build, and like halfway through, I was like, oh, I should have I should have made this into a video, but anyway, that's besides the point. So I have a Core i7. Uh, it's the 13th gen, the Raptor Lake, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, uh, 4070, um, and I know Nvidia cards right now are a little bit of a ripoff in terms of you know the price to performance, but that one seemed like the best out of it was in the sweet spot so to speak. So um, it's a sweet little machine, or I should say big machine. It's a ATX case, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, but I'm still new to DaVinci Resolve, so I, I shot a whole video and didn't realize that I couldn't use 422 10-bit with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. At least that's been my experience so far. So I'm shooting this video because I've been slacking pretty bad, and I want to be a little bit more consistent with this channel. Not that I expect to be perfect, but yeah, anyway. And also, you might have noticed, um, I mean, it's obvious, I'm using the DJI uh, 2 kit, the... This is just one of the um, two, two uh, transmitters, and I gotta say, I know I made a video on the DD Theos kit, and I wanted to really, really love that kit, and obviously it's in a completely different ballpark in terms of, like, who that's for. I mean, this is not a pro kit. Um, the DD Theos is a two-channel UHF kit, and that's really meant for, you know, pros or, or maybe, like, people getting into, like, pro work. I mean, not that you can't do professional work. I mean, anything that you can do that you get paid for, even with this, I mean, you can use it for pro work, but this is more of a consumer kit because it's using the, it's using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, not UHF. UHF is just more, much more robust. This, however, you can record 32 bit float simultaneously while you're transmitting, which you can't do that with the DD Theos kit because of a Zaxcom patent, which very nerdy, but uh, you can't do that with the uh, DD Theos kit. Um, but the reason I returned that kit, and if you watch my old video on it, I actually had two DD Theos kits. One I actually received from somebody who um, is on a lot of the DD uh, YouTube videos, and they actually sent me a replacement because my first kit, I was having issues with uh, the noise level. And no matter what gain staging I was doing, I was just getting a lot of noise. Um, both, both on my camera and I've had some issues with the S5 II's preamps, but also my sound device is mixed pre six Mark II. Regardless, no matter what gain staging setting I put it at, I was having some, uh, some issues with the noise floor. And so I got a replacement and I still had the same issues. And just I mean, for me personally, I mean, like I had to be honest with myself, I'm not doing a lot of pro work. I mean, I've used Sennheiser G4s or sorry, G3s in the past. Um, Sony UWPD kit, and I'm probably fine with the DJI kit. Honestly, <laughs> I'm doing this more for fun, and this is super convenient. Now, like I said, I don't think this is a pro kit whatsoever, um, but it's super convenient. You can record right into the transmitter without a lav mic, and you can record 32-bit float simultaneously because of the patent on the Theos. So I definitely plan to revisit the Theos in the future. Maybe they can I don't know, update it or get rid of that that noise floor that at least I was getting. And maybe it's just user experience. Maybe it's just me. Um, but I didn't really want to, you know, waste time with that. So, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty much it. So, yeah. So the uh, Panasonic uh, S9 supposedly is going to be coming out May 23rd. These aren't my speculations or this isn't my um, theory. I mean, there's been a lot of channels. I forget his name. I think it's... Uh, Andrea, Andrea, I forget, I forget the guy's name, but he puts up a bunch of videos on for like these early releases and, or I guess rumors that are coming out. And 
I know I made some bad predictions in the past with the S1H and it's uh, the S1H Mark II and it's still not out yet. But the S9 is supposedly coming out in a couple days and it's going to be a very compact, I guess more like a competitor to the uh, Sony ZV E10. I thought it was going to be more of a competitor to the um, Sony a7C2, which I kind of was, I don't want to say disappointed, but I wasn't that impressed with that camera. Supposedly the S9 is going to be coming in at a lower price than the S5 II, and it won't have an EVF, which will be interesting, but I think it's really geared for more like, you know, talking head videos, content creation, TikTokers, um, people who are just using it for sh social media, don't need dual SD card slots. I am curious though how the heat or the heat management is going to be because the S5 II and the S52X obviously have the the cooling fan on the top and I don't think there's going to be any room for the S9. It's going to be so tiny it doesn't look like there's going to be any like handle on it, but it could be and like some people might say, "Oh, you were kind of if you watch that video, you were kind of harsh on the A7C2." I was only critical of it just because of the price point where the S9 is going to be I guess it all depends on the price point, but yeah, um, I'm really curious to see what Panasonic does with that camera, and supposedly there's going to be more cameras coming out this year. I'm not going to say what they are. I, I already learned my lesson, so, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, just wanted to make this quick video just to let you guys know. Also, I did update, and I'm a little late to the party, I did update the firmware on my S5 Mark II to 3.0, and it does seem like it's a substantial upgrade uh, in terms of autofocus. Like, if I go to the corners here, and I know this isn't really much, you know, like there's not really, I don't know, that really that really shows you much, but I think the autofocus performance is a little bit snappier than it was before. Um, I don't shoot a lot of videos with a bunch of people in the frame, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but I've noticed it substantially better than it was before. So that's a really cool thing about Panasonic. They definitely release a lot of firmware and keep updating their cameras as they go. So, uh, yeah. Just a quick little update there. I know there's a bunch of other things that they included too in the firmware update. Um, I haven't really played around with it that much, like the proxy recording, and apparently they improved the IBIS as well, which I thought it was already pretty good as is, but yeah, we'll have to play around with that a little bit more. But anyway, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.